Angler Program, uh, Lynn Foster. Thank you. I'm Lynn Foster, Marketing Coordinator with the department. And um, i set up this really quickly here. Um, when I introduce myself as Marketing Coordinator, lots of people say, why does the Department of Wildlife need a Marketing Coordinator? And um, the answer is funding. We get less than 3% of our funding from the state general fund. And a large part of our funding comes from license dollars, funding fish licenses. Another large portion comes from excise taxes, uh, which in any year, um, are a portion, a portion of which is based on um, the number of fishing and hunting licenses we sell. So one strategy for the agency to remain viable financially is to keep understanding anglers fishing. Um, and I'm going to tell you about our Lapsed Angler Outreach Program. Thank you, Kelly. This is sure. my boss, Kelly Clark. She's Conservation Education Division Chief. Um, I'm going to tell you about our Lapsed Angler Outreach Program and then a couple of other things that um, we're working on in conservation education in just a second. Could you t uh, talk towards the microphone to make sure it's recorded? Oh, yeah. I have a tendency to stand up and wander, but I'll, I'll do that. Sorry for the delay. Um, I'm going to talk principally about the Lapsed Angler Outreach Program and then, as I said, touch briefly upon these other items here. Um, all right. <laughs> I'll be up and down a lot, I guess. Um, we, For the purposes of this program, we define lapsed anglers as those who purchased in within uh, the past three years, but not in the most recent year. And we target them because they're most likely to purchase again. They have the skills, they have the interest, they have the equipment, and it's a lot less expensive to do outreach to them than to try to convince members of the general public to pick up fishing. Um, the Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation, we go by the acronym RBFF, um, provides us a great infrastructure for implementing this program. We entered into this program with them for a three-year period beginning in 2008, and there are currently 31 states participating in this Lapsed Angler Outreach Program. Um, the RBFF was created by Congress as, as part of the Sport, Fishing, and Boating Safety Act, and they are funded by excise tax dollars on fishing gear and motorboat fuel, and their main goal is to grow boating and fishing participation. Um, this program emphasizes measurement tools. We want to show the value that our efforts generate in this program and be accountable for that. And the RBFF provides all the infrastructure you see here on the left-hand side of the column. We provide what you see on the right hand. And um, what, what the public sees is um, national print advertising. They hear local radio. They see internet advertising placed by the RBFF. They might see a promotion at a AAA baseball game or some of our PR efforts in the media. And um, what Endow provides is making those direct connections with those who appear to have abandoned the sport. And we do that via direct mail. And um, in the spring and early summer of 08, we sent out some of these oversized postcards to efforts. And I'll show the the creative up on the screen. And that's another thing that the RBFF provides is this creative is based on um, research. That's the back side of the postcard. And it's tested among focus groups. So it's 
it's as effective as we can humanly make it possible. This one we sent out just before Father's Day. In the back side of that. And we can't measure, although this is a mass media effort, we, we can't measure the response to it overall, but we can measure the response that the recipients of our postcard um, bring us. So what we do is look at those that we sent the postcard to who acted on it and purchased a fishing license. Um, and one of the measurements we use is return on investment. And it's simply a measure of the net profit that is created from an investment. So if I made 50 cents net profit on a dollar investment, then my ROI is 50%. Or, in other words, for every dollar I spent, I, I brought in a dollar fifty. And as gross revenue for this calculation for our program, we use the license sales from those in our target group who received the postcard, plus an estimate of the um, amount of, that they would have spent in trout stamps, and then subtract program costs and divide by the program costs. So ROI, our ROI is 37% for this program. And this is a 2008 figure. We don't have 2009 yet. Um, which means that for every dollar we spent, we brought back in a dollar thirty-seven, and um, the direct res the response rate on the postcards is five point six percent, which is very impressive by direct mail standards. Um, here are a couple of other metrics on the program. Um, one of the things that we didn't count in the ROI is future sport fish restoration funds. Uh, a couple of years down the road, when those funds are allocated, they will use the figure of how many license sales we made. And if you uh, apply a figure to that for this program, you could add an extra 15000 to our ROI, which would bump it up to 70%, which is a super figure. But um, we need to look at these sorts of things realistically. And um, no measurement is perfect. I realize that some of those people who got our postcard might have purchased a license regardless. And our postcard didn't make a difference. We might have reached some people in our um, overall media effort who were not planning on buying a license but went ahead and did anyway. Or it could be that many years of drought have been diminishing our license sales. Or it could be that the current recession is giving us a little boost. There are so many mitigating factors that just all can't be teased out. But um, the point I want to make is that all along the way in this program, we're evaluating and measuring and improving so that we can um, uh, you know, do the best to get people back in the sport. Another <coughs> measurement that we can use is looking at our overall license sales. These are, this is a 15 year chart of combination and fishing license sales for residents only. And uh, the year where you see the dip 0405 was when uh, the department's director and Kelly Clark decided to create a marketing team. And they decided to create the position of marketing coordinator. And we hope that our efforts are showing a difference. So I think overall trends are another thing that we need to have a look at. And I think this is very impressive, even in some very uh, heavy drought years that we've showed a little bit of an increase. And then here are a few refinements to the plan um, as we move ahead. Just some top line ideas of some things that um, we'll be having moving forward. And I also want you to know that we have done a little bit of outreach to hunters, and we're looking at hunter recruitment as well. The National Shooting Sports Foundation funds hunting heritage partnership grants, and those are aimed at recruiting and retaining hunters. Um, in the fall of 08, we did some outreach to a very select group of hunters and did some survey work with them and found out some very interesting things. Um, one of them was that our database needs some work in this area. And before we do any more direct outreach to hunters or glean any more statistics from this database, we need to do some work there. We also found out that our hunters are very open to receiving email uh, surveys from us. And we got a tremendous response from that. One of the things that we did was include an open-ended question at the end of the survey and got back some very, very interesting comments. And I know I've given you just a lot of top line information on both of these programs, but I have full program reports either in electronic form or hard copy if you're interested in looking at those any further. And then, um, aside from that, we're doing some bear aware outreach. There are a number of people across different divisions in the agency who are part of the Sierra Front Bear Working Group. 
which is a group consisting of state and local uh, agencies that are working towards a common goal of reducing human bear conflicts. And uh, this group has been very successful in creating a couple of local ordinances regarding bear feeding and trash handling, and there's one in Washoe County in the process currently. And in support of that effort, we have a pretty strong radio schedule running um, in Washoe County through the end of this year. And that was funded um, by a special allocation from the legislature this year. <coughs> and now I'd like to shift to talking about advertising that we don't pay for. Um, the Conservation Education Dep Division spends a lot of time on um, public relations and gaining exposure in the media that's not paid. And this is important because um, we feel that uh, we are a, a, an important voice for sportsmen. Um, in October of this year, Southwick Associates did a survey of hunters and anglers and asked the question, which type of organization do you trust the most for accurate information regarding fish and wildlife conservation? And the most trusted agency, uh, the most trusted source was state fish and wildlife agencies. And the second most trusted source was sport fishing and hunting nonprofit agencies. So we take our task of informing the public very seriously. Um, these are some figures that show the value of the media that the department gains that isn't paid. This is exposure in um, newspapers, television, and broadcast. And what I have done here is taken the time or space and considered it as if we had paid for it as advertising to quantify the exposure um, that the department is getting. These figures are annual and they're for 2008. And broadcast represents only those television radio, radio segments that we produce or um, provide to the stations which they air. It doesn't include occasional news stories. You can quantify those kinds of things, but a service to um, provide you that information is prohibitively expensive. We do have a clipping service for print, and so this is everything, not just our media releases, but everything that gets printed in the media um, that we have a part in um, garnering for the department. And in, your, in the Commission's support materials is a huge spreadsheet that details all that exposure, which is a useful tool for us. And then we're on the other end of things, too, um, selling advertising in our publications. There are three publications in which we accept advertising. And our advertisers range from um, big retailers like Shields to our newest advertiser, which is the Eagle Valley Resort in Pioche. And uh, the advertising revenue that's generated from this program by statute goes back to defray the costs of printing. And it, this program does so by about one third of the cost of printing and shipping our materials to the license agents for distribution to the public. And that concludes my report. Are there any questions? Mr. Ray. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, looking at these numbers, I mean, I'm a little disconcerted about some. I don't think the value of the program is, it, there seems to be some fairly easy ways you could probably come up with an approximation of the value of the program, like taking your mailing list and using a sample group of it, and not, not sending a mail in, mail in to 10,000 people and see what the percentage of their return is versus all the others. Um, Have you done that the, somewhere? Yes. Um, that is a part, that is a component of the program that the RBFF is adding to evaluation next year. It was um, on the slide that discussed future plans, um, and I simply stated it as control group. We'll be culling out control groups from our treatment groups in the future and, and be doing a comparison there. You really track them by just giving them a dollar off on with this cute with the card you give them, you know, if you could. Yeah, and you know what? That's why we're excited about the Shakespeare offer too, which is another enhancement. Shakespeare yeah. has decided on a national level to step up and offer anglers if they spend a certain amount on equipment and show proof that they have has purchased a fishing license, they will send them a ten dollar um, rebate. I remember for the, uh, and I think Tom or Commissioner Cavan would know, I remember when we first proposed the advertising for the hunt book, 
it was turned down vehemently by the agency. Too much work to go out and get advertisements and Idaho and every other state, Ford would put a big old page and they would offset the cost of the book and, yeah. and we went and allowed them to do it because the state printer is the only one that could do it. We had to do the bill to change it uh -huh. and uh, the department was really vehemently opposed to it because the work would have to, I don't know many names, but I'm glad to see that, that it's paying offsetting a third of the cost. you remember that, Commissioner Cavan? It is, um, I have to say that I, I think that was a very smart move and it is difficult to run a program like that within the confines of the state system and I'm still looking for ways to simplify it um, and some of the other states lose a lot of their revenue because their solution is to outsource it to um, someone who's going to take 15% right off the top. So it's a little bit more work than I would like it to be but you know we can still make it pay off and I'm very grateful to have the support of our management of Ken Mayer and of our new deputy director who's helping me um, solve problems like this. Which by the way he hasn't been introduced to the commission has he? We thought we'd throw him in the fire first. <laughs> right in the breach. Maybe sometime you ought to do it. Under we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda we'll have the uh, 2000, 